Okay, these are 7.3 and we've got some uh, solids formed by revolving curves around the x-axis and uh, number 11 it says find the volume of the solid generated by revolving the region bounded by the lines y equals x squared and y equals 0 and x equals 2 about the x-axis. So I drew my sketch over here. Bring this over here so you can see it. And this is the curve y equals x squared, this is the line x equals 2, so we're going to revolve that around the x-axis. Alright, so the first thing I'll do is I'll draw my reflection, so you can kind of see what that looks like. So this is after I revolve it around 180 degrees. Didn't quite get it as symmetrical as I would like. And then we can see that we're going to form these little discs. That might be the radius, and it would look something like this. And they're going to go like this, and they're going to be going from 0 to 2. And we'll form these little circles. Okay. So I know the volume is going to equal the integral from 0 to 2 pi r squared dx. And we need to find the area of this, so we need the radius, and the radius is just going to be my x squared, so my volume will equal, and I can bring the pi out in front, and that's going to be the integral from 0 to 2. Uh, my radius squared, and what's my radius? My radius is x squared. That's all there is to it. And we can simplify that a little bit, so the volume will equal pi times the integral from 0 to 2 of x to the fourth dx, and I'm ready to take the antiderivative. So that equals just pi times and that's going to be x to the fifth over 5. I'm going to evaluate that from 0 to 2, and the nice thing is the 0 goes away. So I just end up with, and what's 2 to the fifth? 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, times 2 is 32. So that's going to be 32 over 5 times pi. And that's your volume. Okay, number 12 is pretty similar. We just have this as the cubic. Now, up here when I drew this, I kind of drew the, the quadratic, but we're just only, or the parabola, and we were only looking at the first, uh, only looking at the part over here in the first quadrant, because that was from 0 to 2. Same thing over here, I drew the cubic, so you can kind of see, remember our good old cubic, y equals x cubed, goes like this. But again, we're only interested in this area here, because it says that it's. Uh, bounded by uh, y equals 0, x2, x equals 2, and y equals x cubed, so that's going to be this area in here. y equals 0. <clears throat> so again, we're going to revolve that, so again, it looks very similar. So this would be my, what it looks like when you revolve it after 180 degrees, that's your reflection. And again, we're going to draw these Try this in a different color this time. There's the radius, and we're going to draw these little discs that go around like this. And we're going to sum those up. And they'll go from here to here. So again, my volume, I have the same, remember the dist method, volume equals, and we're going to also integrate from 0 to 2 with the same parameters there. Okay, so volume equals, then we can bring the pi out, so pi times the integral from 0 to 2 of the radius squared dx, and in this case the radius squared is going to be 
the length given by this curve or the height given by this curve at any point, which is going to be x cubed. And that just ends up equaling the volume that equals the pi times the integral from 0 to 2 of x to the sixth dx. So I'm ready to take the antiderivative, so this is going to equal pi times. And if I take the antiderivative of x to the sixth, I get x to the seventh over 7 from 0 to 2. And again, the zero just drops out. Zero over zero to any power is zero over seven is zero. So I just have this, so it's going to equal pi times. And what's x to the seventh? Well, I'm sorry, two to the seventh. Well, that's another two times 32 is 64 times two is 128. So it ends up being times 128 over seven. And then I can put the pi in the back. So I have, pardon me. 128 over 7 pi. There's your volume. Okay. And the third one here, number 14. Uh, this was the curve. I should have labeled it. And we're just going to find the uh, volume when we rotate the region bounded by this curve, which was y equals x minus x squared. And then we can find out, we can take a look at this and uh, if we set it equal to zero to find the zeros, it's a parabola, but to sketch it, we would just set it equal to zero, so x minus x squared equals zero. If I factor out an x, I get one, sorry, one minus x equals zero, so either x equals zero or x equals 1, so that's how I got the graph here. And I put the halfway point in here, I got 1, 4, so I had to change my scale so, you know, it would look decent. So that's how you could sketch it. And again, we can graph the reflection down here after 180 degrees. That's going to look like this. And my disk will look like this. There's a radius of 1, and it's going to go around like this. And we'll just be summing those little disks up here. Hope you can see that. I can make it a little darker here. There's the radius. So those disks are going to go from here to here, from 0 to 1. Because those are my x-intercepts. So again, volume equals, in this case it would be from 0 to 1, pi r squared dx, of so this method. I'll bring the pi out in front again, so pi times the integral from 0 to 1 of r squared This is a little more complicated because my radius is going to be given by the height, which is the value of the function at any point x. Remember, it's a function of x. So as these go from left to right, this will change. And the y, which is actually the radius, is going to change depending on the value of x. Like right here, when x is a half, it's going to be one-fourth, etc. So we put this in, so this is my radius, x minus x squared. And if I multiply this out or square this out, 0 to 1. <clears throat> it's just a, like a binomial squared, so that's no problem. It's going to end up with as x squared minus twice the product, so 2 times, and x times x squared is x cubed plus x to the fourth dx, just by multiplying that out. Then we have the volume equals pi times the integral from, um, I guess I can just take the antiderivative now. So that's going to be x cubed over 3 minus 2x to the 4th over 4 plus x to the 5th over 5. And that's going to be from 0 to 1. And again, all these 0 functions will 
or these zero values will cancel out. So this is going to end up being pi. And then when I put 1 in here, I just get 1 third minus, and if I put 1 in here, I get 2 over 4, which is 1 half, plus 1 fifth. So now we got some fraction work to do. That equals pi times, and I guess my common denominator is 30. 3 times 2. So I have uh, 3 times 2 times 5 is 30, so I've got, if I multiply the top and bottom by 10, I got 10 over 30 minus 15 over 30 plus 6 over 30. Multiply the top and the bottom by 6 to get 30, by 15, and by 10. And this ends up equaling and 10 plus 6 is 16, minus 15 is 1, so it just ends up being pi over 30. And that's your volume. Okay? So that those make sense. That's the first three. And we'll get the other ones out to you in just a moment.